Hello, and welcome to a presentation on interval notation with me, Mr. Limford. I'm sorry I couldn't be in class today, but hopefully this video helps out. We're going to try to uh, really understand what interval notation is, and then how it is written for different types of intervals. So first off, the purpose of interval notation is it's a way of writing a set that is an interval. Now remember, an interval is essentially a collection of numbers between two endpoints. So, uh, all the numbers from 3 to 5. That's an interval. I want everything between one value and another value. And some people might say, well, let's see. If I took the number 3, the number 5, right in the middle, well, that's the number 4. So is that really a set? You know, just the number 4? But people often forget about, oh, what about 4.5? What about three and a half? What about 4.1? What about even right in there? My stylus doesn't even go that fine. 4.01. What about pi? I think you're starting to realize that really there are infinitely many numbers between three and five because there's infinitely many decimals. So there's no way we could write all of these out as just a typical set. There's no way we could list all these possible numbers. So we're going to say this is an interval. We're going to take all of the real numbers between a lower bound and an upper bound. So everything from 3 to 5. That's our lower and our upper bound. So we're going to write this, and we're going to separate each one of them by a comma. But then on the ends, we're going to put uh, a couple different possible symbols. On the ends, we could put parentheses. Oops, wrong direction. We could put parentheses. Or we might put brackets. So these are two of the possible symbols we might put on either end of the interval. And they mean different things. Parentheses mean exclusion. And brackets mean inclusion. All right, now let's remind ourselves. Inclusion, that means you are including the endpoint values in the set. Whatever these brackets are touching is included in the set. Means it is a number that works in the set. Exclusion. Exclusion, that means I'm excluding certain numbers. Any numbers that these parentheses are touching, I'm going to exclude them from the set. The big question is, if I had a set of all real numbers greater than or equal to 1, but less than or equal to 7, that's going to say I want all numbers, so I want to find numbers, well, let's see, uh, greater than or equal to 1, but less than or equal to 7. So i got to find everything between 1 and 7. So it's pretty easy to see my lower bound is 1 and my upper bound is 7. But then the question is, what about the endpoints? What about 1 and 7? Are they included in the set? Well, let's take a look. 1. I want numbers greater than or equal to 1. And I set up my little... I set up my little... Um, inequality right here. So would 1 be allowed in this described set? Is 1 greater than or equal to 1, but less than or equal to 7? Well, hopefully you're saying, yeah, that's true. 1 is less than or equal to 1, and it's less than or equal to 7, so yeah, it checks out. So I'm going to put a bracket around 1. That bracket tells the reader, or whoever I'm trying to communicate this to, hey, you can go ahead and include 1 in the set. 1 is, in fact, in the set. And then the same thing with 7. Is 7 in the set? Well, 1 is less than or equal to 7, and 7 
is in fact less than or equal to itself. So yeah, that works out as well. So I'm going to put a bracket on that. And this right here is our interval. And this is how we're going to write that set of every number is between 1 and 7. And we're telling the reader by including these little symbols here, hey, go ahead and include 1 and 7. They're a part of the set too. All right, why don't we try a couple little practice problems uh, and see if you can get them as we work along. So the first problem is the set of all numbers greater than or equal to 3 and less than or equal to 17. Pause the video for a second, take a minute to see if you can set up an inequality or if you can start setting up some kind of interval. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to work on this. Um, but notice that we're saying I want something greater than or equal to 3. So that means I want numbers that are bigger than or equal to 3 and then less than or equal to 17. I want all numbers that are less than or equal to 17. So I'm picking things between 3 and 17. So my bound is 3, and my upper bound is 17. And since we're saying greater than or equal to, that's inclusion. Anytime you see those keywords greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, you're going to include both of the endpoints. And it should make sense. 3 is greater than or equal to 3, and 17 is less than or equal to 17. So we can go ahead and say that both 3 and 17 are in the set. Okay, let's try another problem. The set of all real numbers greater than 5, but less than 9. Notice that there's a bit of a change with some of the keywords here. No longer is it greater than or equal to. It's just greater than and just less than. Take a minute, pause the video, and see if you can figure this one out. Okay, hope you had some chance to figure out what this is going to be. But I think it's pretty obvious that our endpoints are going to be 5 and 9. We're saying we want numbers that are greater than 5 and less than 9. But then it comes to the question, okay, do we include or do we not include the endpoints? Do I include 5? Do I not include 5? Well, think about this. Is 5 greater than 5? Does that work? Is 5 greater than 5? Well, no, that's not true. 5 is not, it's equal to 5, but it's not greater than 5. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to put a parenthesis around this. I'm going to say 5's not included in this set. Everything above 5 is included in the set, like 5.1, 5.01, 5 right? Everything super close to 5, as long as it's greater than 5, is in the set. But the number 5 itself doesn't work because of this. Because we're trying to figure out, wait, can 5 be greater than 5? And that's not true. That's not going to work. The similar thing for number 9. That's why we're going to say a uh, parenthesis is going to go around 9. We are not going to include it. 5 and 9 are not a part of the set. Everything in between them is, but 5 and 9 are not a part of the set. Hopefully you notice the keyword change there. Anytime you see the keywords greater than or less than, that automatically tells you, hey, use parentheses. You are excluding certain values from the set. You're going to exclude the endpoints. Okay, let's try another example. Uh, let's try to mix things up a little bit. The set of all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 2. So greater than or equal to negative 2, but less than 7. Take a minute, look at your keywords, and see if you can put together what this interval might be. Okay, hopefully the keywords stood out to you. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious that we're taking numbers between negative 2 and 7. Now, the one keyword I want to point out is this less than. Uh, I just finished telling you that less than can be treated um, to really represent exclusion. So I automatically know I'm going to put a parenthesis around that because I want all numbers less than 7. Well, is 7 less than 7? Well, no, that's not true at all. 7 is not less than 7, so we can forget all about that. So that's why I put a parenthesis around this. 
Now the next part that might be a little confusing is greater than or equal to two. I want all numbers greater than or equal to negative two. Well, is negative two greater than or equal to negative two? I know I wrote that a little backwards, but is, great, is negative two greater than or equal to negative two? Is this true? Well, yes, in fact it is. Anytime you see greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, you know inclusion. I'm telling you to include that number in the set. So this is a bit of a different set. This is a bit of a weirder one. This is saying I want all numbers between negative 2 and 7. You can include negative 2 in the set, but don't include 7. That means if we look at a number line, let's see if we can change up some colors here. If I drew a little number line, and let's say I'm labeling some values. So let's say this is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's just pretend. And I want to graph this interval. I want to take a look at all the possible numbers that can go into here. I can actually graph from the numbers 2 all the way up to 7. I'm going to put a bracket right here to say, hey, go ahead and include 2 in the set. It's in there. The set actually starts off with number 2, or ne number negative 2. If I started listing all the infinitely many values, I would have negative 2 in that set. But because 7 isn't in the set, I have to put that parenthesis around it. And that parenthesis is going to say, hey, you can get as close as you want to 7. Okay? You can pick stuff like 6.9. 6.99, 6.99999, and you could list a hundred different nines if you wanted to. They are all ridiculously close to seven, but they still aren't seven. Okay? They're super close, but they're not exactly seven. That means they are a part of the set, but seven itself is not in the set. Okay? Hopefully you're starting to get the hang of this and being able to picture what's going on here. Let's take another example, um, and let's see if we might have some inclusion, some exclusion, or a mixture of both like in the previous problem. So the set of all real numbers, at least negative 4, but no more than 5. Okay. The set of all real numbers, at least negative 4, but no more than 5. Look at those keywords, at least, no more than. See if you can set up your interval and see if they help you determine whether something is included or excluded. Okay, I know this one was a little different because we're not seeing greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, stuff like that. But I think it's pretty obvious that the endpoints are negative 4 and 5. And now we have to determine, are we going to include them or not? So, when I say something, I want the set of all numbers at least negative 4. So I want numbers that go at least to negative 4. Does that mean I'm including negative 4 if I say at least? Well, ask yourself, if it's not that obvious, is negative 4 at least negative 4? I know that's kind of a weird way of phrasing it, but hopefully you're saying to yourself, well, yeah, I guess that's true. Negative 4 is, in fact, at least negative 4. So that means we're going to include it. And then no more than. Is 5 no more than 5? Well, yeah, we should be saying yes, that's true. So we're going to include that as well. Here's a hint for you. And put this as a big note to yourself. If you see at least, no more than, at most, no less than, any phrasing like that, you automatically know it's included. It is, in fact, included, so we're going to use the brackets around it, okay? We're going to use the brackets around it because that the way of phrasing at least, no more than, uh, no less than, at most... Those are all just fancy ways of saying greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, okay? So you know automatically anytime you see these keywords here that you have inclusion. All right, 
let's use this idea to kind of help us set up the next interval because we're looking at the set of real numbers no less than negative 13 and less than 6. All right, pause the video, take another minute, see if you can set up this interval and use your keywords to help you out. All right, so it's pretty obvious that negative 13 to 6 is our interval, everything between negative 13 and 6. You should recognize that when I saw no less than, uh, we're going to put a bracket on that because I was just finished up saying that um, when you have things like no less than, no more than, at least, at most, that means inclusion. But then we see we want numbers less than 6. We're going to put a parenthesis on that because these... Uh, this interval needs to contain numbers that are still less than 6. Is 6 less than 6? Well, no, of course not. That's not true. So that's why we put a parenthesis on it. So again, anytime you see words like greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, no more than, no less than, at least, at most, anything kind of like that, you know it's inclusion you know to put a bracket on that. The only time we're really going to put a parenthesis is when you are actually told the words less than or greater than. I can't really work it any other way in the English language. There might be some other possible combination, but traditionally, the only way to tell you whether to exclude something is to put less than or greater than as the description. Okay, hopefully this is starting to make sense and you're starting to see how the keywords can help you select whether or not to put brackets or parentheses. So let's do number six. The set of all real numbers greater than eight, but no more than 15. So the set of all real numbers greater than eight and no more than 15. Use your keywords, pause the video, and see if you can come up with what this interval is. Okay. Last one, let's see if we can come up with this. Well, the interval should be between 8 and 15. Ah, 15. Um, and I see one big keyword here, this no more than. Well, I remember, yeah, no more than is a keyword uh, to, or keywords to reference inclusion. So I put a bracket on 15. What about 8? It just says greater than. It doesn't say greater than or equal to, or it doesn't say anything else. It just says greater than. Well, that's going to be a parenthesis. Hopefully you're starting to get the hang of this and starting to see when stuff needs to be included, when stuff needs to be excluded. It's, and this is when it gets difficult, is when we come into trying to describe it in the English language. Hopefully this helps out. What I'd like you to do is take some time, answer the next few practice problems, um, you have a little worksheet to work on, so take that time to answer these practice problems and see for yourself if you can kind of come up with what the interval might be. And really, once you find the endpoints, you're just asking yourself, should I include them, should I not? Should I include one, should I include the other, or neither? All right. Hopefully this helped out. If not, feel free to send me an email over the weekend. My email is k. That is the worst K ever. K-L-I-N-F-O-R-D at WCCnet.edu. Feel free to send me an email if you have any questions over the weekend. I will be here at the end of the day. And otherwise, take care.